Hello, my name is Evan Brand, functional medicine practitioner, certified personal trainer, nutritional therapist, talking with you about autoimmunity. This is huge. How huge? Well, it's one of the top 10 causes of death in women under 65 years old. I'm going to say that one more time. Top 10 cause of death in women under 65. This is a huge problem. It's epidemic. It's the second highest cause of chronic illness in the United States. Over here, over 100 diseases are autoimmune in nature and it can affect any body system. So autoimmunity, simplified, is the body mounting an attack against itself. So the common issue that I see in my clinic is Hashimoto's, thyroiditis. Now all this means is that the body is attacking the thyroid gland. Now you have rheumatoid arthritis, an autoimmune disease where the body attacks the joints. There's all other types of autoimmune conditions that we can talk about, but there's so many, I mean over a hundred different diseases that are autoimmune in nature. There's different autoimmune skin conditions where you can have different rashes and changing and peeling of the skin. I mean, it's amazing what all can happen once autoimmunity sets foot. So we could spend time defining that, but that's a pretty good overview. If you're struggling or you know someone that's struggling with an autoimmune disease, you know exactly what I'm talking about and how chronic and how seriously debilitating this, can, this stuff can be. So we're gonna go over some of the top five causes here. And now these are so general that I'm gonna be able to encompass a lot of other deeper causes within these. So number one, chronic emotional and cognitive stress. Yes, we do live in stressful times. A lot of people are rushing, living a fast paced life. They're eating, oh, I dropped my eraser. Just in case I need it. A lot of people are rushing on the highway. They're just beating themselves up emotionally. You know, there's a lot of stress with families and uh, worrying about our kids and our spouses and our health and our parents and our grandparents that are getting older. So many chronic emotional and cognitive issues going on. Now, inside of this whole cognitive stress picture, a lot of people are not feeling in charge of their emotions. That's what I find a lot. A lot of people are just overwhelmed by stress and they don't know what to do about it. So then they end up developing poor coping mechanisms. So whether they're going to the bar after work to go get some drinks or whether they're just coming home and binge eating on sugar or whether they're just binging on TV shows or just vegging out, they're just, they're never really facing this emotional and cognitive stress and that stuff gets locked inside of us and it's a big deal. So poor nutrition. So this includes genetically modified organisms. This includes food allergens and hidden sensitivities. So a lot of people are eating things that they are allergic to without knowing it. I've even developed allergies towards foods that I love like avocados. Now I'm not saying necessarily that, that could cause an autoimmune condition. It very well could, but I developed food allergy just in general where I was having some GI issues and I was actually having a little bit of rash that would pop up on my forehead and under my eyes and things like that when I would eat avocado. So I had to cut it out for about six to eight weeks and then I was able to successfully reintroduce it. So you may need to go through a type of elimination diet to really discover what are the hidden allergies that are causing you some autoimmune conditions because what happens is the body begins to think that it's getting attacked by the food. So excuse the rough drawing here but basically you have this receptor site and now this could contri this could trigger um, the autoimmune attack so you have say a little gluten molecule or like a rice molecule these different sized molecules that can fit into this spot and fill this little receptor site and that can trigger it's called an antigenic response or creates antigens where you have these antibodies that are now going to come and attack whatever is causing the issue. So foods that normally shouldn't cause an issue, if your body's in this hyper reactive state or this hypersensitive state, you're going to react to everything and anything that you eat or you even touch. And this stuff can fill in this little spot here and then boom, now a reaction has begun. It's bad stuff. 
Next, adrenal stress, adrenal fatigue. Now, how does this tie into autoimmunity? Well, what happens is when you're under adrenal stress, it's gonna reduce your immune system. So you may have had this happen to yourself or you may know somebody, that high charging athlete or that executive, that dude that's just always on top of his game. He's running the business. He's just, oh man, he's so awesome. You just wanna aspire to be him. And then boom, they hit a wall and they crash. Well, once you're under so much adrenal stress and you eventually jump into adrenal fatigue, that's going to lower your immune system. So that's going to deplete your body of different vitamins and minerals. It's going to cause you to feel fatigued, depressed, irritable, moody. There's so many different things that are associated with this, but this can all tie back into the autoimmune picture because the immune system is lowered as a whole. And now you're going to be a little bit more reactive and more susceptible to things that you normally wouldn't have been. So that's how that plays in. Hormonal imbalance. All this stuff we have been talking about is hormonal imbalance. I mean, think about if you're getting uh, poor nutrition, say you're getting some non-organic meat or you're getting meat, maybe it's not organic, uh, but it could still have some hormones in it. There's a lot of companies now where you may not be able to have organic and hormone free, but at least you can have hormone free. So, I mean, if you're adding in synthetic hormones into your diet, that's gonna be a huge cause of hormonal imbalance. Chronic emotional and cognitive stress, that's gonna throw off your hormones too. It's gonna throw off your cortisol, it's gonna throw off your adrenaline, your noradrenaline, all of these different brain chemicals that are tied in. So hormonal imbalance is not just something that women should be like, oh yeah, that's me. No, men, this affects you too. So stress can cause hormonal imbalance. Insulin, so I wrote insulin here so I would re remind myself to jump back into the topic of nutrition. What happens with your hormones when it comes to nutrition, so if you're eating sugar, you eat the sugar, the blood sugar, goes up. You feel really good for a little bit. Now, this is a high blood sugar state. That's an emergency response. So the pancreas secretes insulin to deal with this high blood sugar. Now the blood sugar crashes. Now you feel like crap and you're exhausted. So then you eat more sugar. You go back up. Now your blood sugar is high. Now insulin has to come in. So eventually, you get the, you get the idea, eventually you become insulin resistant your cells become deaf to the sound or the hormone of insulin. So now your body's producing more and more and more and more and more insulin. And when you're in a high insulin state, you cannot burn fat. So a lot of times we'll see weight gain with autoimmune clients because their body has just become resistant to some of these hormones. So now this blood sugar is high all the time. And then you end up with say type two diabetes where the pancreas just gives out that can also lead to other worse conditions. So getting the insulin under control is gonna be really helpful. You want a little bit more of a smooth sailing insulin curve where yes, you do have a little elevation in blood sugar after you eat a meal, that's normal. And then it comes back down and goes back up, but it's not so extreme. That insulin hormone stress is huge. Now birth control, that's next. A lot of women have taken these different synthetic estrogens and other types of hormones to trick the body into thinking it's pregnant all the time so that you can't get pregnant. If that doesn't sound crazy, it is. And women that have taken birth control for over six years, they're a lot more problematic than women who have not taken birth control for over six years. I don't know why that's the case. It just so happens that the body, maybe it becomes so saturated with estrogen at that point. Maybe the deficiency or the imbalance has gone on so long that it's really hard to pull yourself out. But when looking at different um, documents and journals and things like that online, six years seems to be this point where it becomes a lot harder to restore some of these hormonal imbalances. Now, I've definitely done it for a lot of my female clients. I just tell them, look, I'm not gonna sign in blood. You're gonna get better overnight we can get you better, but it's just going to take a little bit longer than if you only took birth control for a year or two. That's definitely up to you. You know, that's your personal business, what you're doing with birth control. But I recommend looking for natural solutions, whether you're using condoms or other types of non-hormonal birth control methods, that's going to save you a lot of trouble down the road. Maybe not as much trouble as having a kid when you didn't want one, but hey, I don't know. That's, uh, that's a whole nother video there. Okay, toxins. All right, so we have gut toxins, we have skin toxins, we have pesticides, volatile organic compounds, we have heavy metals, Whew, a lot of toxins. Okay, let's start with the gut. So gut toxins, we've talked about the 
Hormonal imbalance, we've talked about adrenal stress, we've talked about genetically modified foods and food allergies, we've talked about chronic emotional and cognitive stress, thinking negative. All this stuff can mess up the gut. So we can increase intestinal permeability, we can cause that leaky gut condition, probably sound like a broken record, but so many people have it. Now, toxins that are in here or here, these toxins, now that the gut's messed up because of the stress, now these toxins can get into the gut and cause more gut issues. Now this is a huge cause of autoimmune conditions. Leaky gut, 99.9% of people that I've ever tested for leaky gut, whether it was just using a questionnaire or actually running an intestinal permeability lab test, anybody with autoimmune condition, they've always had leaky gut. So I'm not one to say ch equals ch always, but that's what I found. So you gotta get the gut under control. Skin, so if you're adding toxins into your life, getting out of the shower and rubbing on some good, uh, what's a crappy brand? Oh, I can't think of any. I don't know, Procter & Gamble, some of these big corporations that make the lotions that are full of meth methyl parabens and propyparabens and fragrances and DEA and all of these other different chemicals that you can't even pronounce. These are a huge, huge, huge cause of autoimmune conditions. I actually have a friend who's a colleague and she realized that her skin products were causing her issues and as soon as she removed, even though she had everything else dialed in, the skin product was still causing an autoimmune flare-up. My wife, same thing. She had a lot of uh, bumps and itchy rashes all over her body. We dialed everything else in and it wasn't until we actually removed some of the toxins in her healthcare products, her skincare products, that she got better. So take a look at the ingredient list of your shampoo, your conditioner, whatever it is, your lotions, your lip balms. There's so many products that you use. Your makeup, I mean, that's huge. You gotta get that crap out. Pesticides, so if you're eating non-organic food, you're going out to restaurants, I go out to wet restaurants, I'm sure I get exposed to pesticides. The solution to pollution is dilution. If you've never heard that before, it's a pretty good little saying. So drinking more water, hydrating, supporting the liver, allowing your body to get rid of some of these pesticides, herbicides, fungicides that are used in non-organic food. Volatile organic compounds, so that is your paints. When you're painting your room and you're not wearing a mask and you're using a low quality paint that has VOCs, whether you're getting a new car and you're, oh, I love that new car smell. That's volatile organic compounds that you're smelling. That's not that good for you. Yeah, it may smell pretty good, but it's not good. So these airborne toxins that are coming in through the lungs, that's enough to trigger this whole autoimmunity cascade as well. So using a HEPA air purifier is something that I use. We have three in our house. We have one in the bedroom, one in the office, and then one in the main living room. They're all different sizes for how much square feet they can filter, but definitely using a HEPA filter is a good idea. Some people use ozone. Um, it's up to you. I personally don't use ozone generators. Now, if you painted a room and you wanted to use an ozone generator to get rid of or disperse some of these molecules, then that could be a safe option, but there's so many ways that you can naturally uh, get rid of VOCs by just opening up the windows, letting that stuff get out of the house, fumigating your house whenever possible. Or if you're going to paint and do arts and crafts and stuff like that, just choosing low or no VOC uh, paints and, and products. Lastly over here, heavy metals. This is a big one, especially with the clients that I help that are over 60. A lot of them have mercury and other heavy metals that are in their body. I often and sometimes just depending on what I think is going on here, I may resort to a hair mineral analysis test to see how bad is their heavy metal load. Now, I suspect that a lot of people have heavy metal loads just because we've eaten contaminated big fish like tuna and we've been exposed to mercury in the environment and things like that. So a lot of people have heavy metal issues. That's not something that I always go to as like my first starting point or my first investigative point with people. I definitely start working on all of this stuff, but eventually we get there if they're not getting better because that's a piece of the puzzle that you can't ignore. If you do ignore it, 
that's maybe why if you're a clinician watching this that's maybe why you're not getting the success that you want because you're forgetting one of these pieces to the puzzle and there's a lot of pieces all right so i'm going to scoot a little bit back here so what do we do this is the six step process the six r's of the functional medicine approach number one remove common sense get rid of the stuff number two reduce reduce the amount of stuff you're exposed to pesticides the organic chemicals that we've talked about the skin products the gut irritants the food allergies the stress reduce all of it restore restore good gut health restore skin health don't soap yourself to death it's okay to get some dirt on your skin and get exposed to those probiotics restore your stress and your ability to handle emotions take the slow lane on the highway let go of regret let go of anger let go of the death of someone let go of the loss of a friendship all of that stuff let it go replace okay i don't know how do you draw a cool little thingy for replace i don't know i'm just going to draw like a little tree replace get the bad stuff out add the good stuff back in simple enough re-inoculate so if we found that there's some gut bugs or some parasites some dysbiosis some dysbiotic flora gut flora that are not supposed to be as prominent as they are making sure we're knocking those out with some targeted nutrients and then re-inoculating the gut adding in the good stuff you don't just if you have some of these symptoms you don't just want to throw in a probiotic oh yeah I, i'm taking a probiotic i'm good that can make you worse if you're not investigating first because you can actually feed this cycle that's gone bad so you have to investigate, make sure there's no bad stuff, no bad guys going on before you just throw probiotics and expect a miracle cure. They're good, but they're not a miracle cure. Uh, Re-inoculate. Let's draw like a little bug. There we go. Looks like a sun, but you get the idea. And then repair. So lastly, you know, I always go back to the gut. So you, you want to repair the gut. So whether you're using an amino acid like glutamine that you would be taking in between meals, whether you want to do a capsule and just pop it open, pour it on your tongue, you want to add some to a drink and drink it down. That's kind of the blanket recommendation that a lot of people will benefit from. Glutamine is really helpful and popular in the bodybuilding community for guys that want to uh, gain muscle without becoming catabolic where your body's eating itself. But glutamine has a lot of repairing benefits as well. So we'll draw a little healthy gut flora there. So this is a 20,000 foot maybe closer I don't know how many feet view this is but this is a view of the common and top five things that I see that cause autoimmunity and how you can start working on removing reducing restoring replacing re-inoculating and repairing these issues remember there are over a hundred diseases any body system can be affected top 10 cause of death in women Second highest cause of chronic illness in the USA. This is a big deal. We need to take control of it now if we want a healthy population in our future. This is Evan Brand signing out. If you would like to talk with me about this issue, you would like to get your autoimmune condition or your friends or your families under control, click below or on screen. You schedule a free consult with me. I will talk with you at no charge for 15 minutes. We'll talk about some of the symptoms, things you got going on, and we'll talk about if and how I can help you get better. All right, take care. Bye.